said it's all right to praise him a little bit if you want to. Has he done something in your life that deserves praise for? Come on, you can praise him if you want to. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 He alone is great, and he is greatly to be praised today. He's bigger than your situation. I said he's bigger than your problem today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has anybody ever been brought out of a situation that seemed like there's no hope? Hallelujah. I said if you have, then God deserves the glory today. I said God deserves the praise today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what? We are not people without hope. The Bible says that he is coming back one day. I know things may look bad, but he is coming back one day. 
And when he comes back, he's going to come back with power and great authority for them that are looking for his return. How many of you today are looking for his return today? Hey, you know what? I may be in this place today. I may be in this world, but I'm not of it. This is not my home. This is not my home. I don't want to make my bed in this world. But I've got a home that's coming. And we're going to be with Christ forever. Praise God. And we got that glorious promise that he is coming back for his church. And we don't have to stay here forever. This is not the final word. If this life hadn't been all that you want it to be, then that's okay. Because this is not the final picture. This is not it. We got a whole nother world to come. Thank the Lord for that promise today. Aren't you glad for the promise of the second coming of Jesus Christ today? Praise God. If we can, our ushers be getting ready to help us this morning to receive our Sunday morning offering. Would uh, like to give all of our, our guests today a, a, a shout out. Uh, glad to have you here with us today in Bethlehem. What about it, church? Give our, our guests a hand today. We're so thankful that you have taken out of your time to be here with us. And uh, we would encourage you to come back as often as you like. And uh, we just want you to be part of this. And just feel free to jump in and worship with us. We're just all here today trying to uh, unite together in praise and worship and our Savior today. I, ain't that right? That's what we're here for today is to worship and praise our Savior. Also, I would just like to give a shout out to all our saints today. You're looking good out there praising God on this Sunday morning. Uh, so thankful to have all of you here today. Uh, we've got a couple of prayer requests we'd like to make known before the Lord. Of course, we want to remember uh, Brother James and Sister Della Rose Williams. Uh, also, uh, Scotty Cook's father, James Cook, is recovering from a stroke. And Bob Lunksford. And uh, also remember the Brown family as well for their passing this week. And uh, we know the Lord is able to meet needs. He's also able to be a comforter uh, when we're in time of trouble. You know, sometimes we just don't know which way to go. We don't know which way to turn. And uh, all we got to do is just call on him. You know what? And I'm convinced that he'll show up every time. You know, it's when we get desperate with, with God. You know, everybody's got needs. Everybody's got needs. But when we get real, when we get desperate with God, that's when he shows up. When we get real with him, it's when he shows up. And I'm thankful today that we have a God that is moved by the spirit of our infirmities. He is touched by our needs. And when we need him, he is there. Aren't you thankful for that today? We're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to pray over these needs and also pray over this offering this morning. And uh, we'll ask you to march as soon as we get done. Father, we love you today. We're so thankful for your goodness and your mercy. God, so thankful, God, that you're a healer, that you're a deliverer, God. God, that you said that you would send the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And it would lead us and it would guide us in all areas, God. God, we pray today, that God, that you would move on these needs, God, those that are uh, suffering from uh, ailment in their bodies. Brother James and Sister Della Rose, we know that you're able to touch them. We know that you're able to touch James Cook, Bob Lunksford today. God, reach down in those hospitals, God, whatever you've got to do, God. We're believing in you today. God, we ask you that you would bless this offering today. Bless those that have to give today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you will today, why don't you go ahead and follow the lead of the ushers and march and give your offering as unto the Lord.
join that heavenly host singing with the angel band over in the glory land. Praise God. Stand with him, if you will, in honor to the reading of the word. Anybody happy today? Amen. We're still in a one God, Jesus name, Holy Ghost, tongue talking church. Are you glad for that? Amen. When you say church, that's what you say. Because there's not but one Lord, one faith, one baptism. On this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's either this or it's nothing. <laughs> That's right. That's the word, isn't it? Praise God. Romans 7. Romans 7, 14 through 21 and then verse 24. Romans 7, 14 through 24. One and then verse 24. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Now the writer of this, of course, was Paul, and he wrote, what, two-thirds of the New Testament. Anyway, he... Uh, he is saying, but I'm carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow it not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now that then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know, if you'll watch the way he prefaces many of these verses, it's for that which I do, for I know. Verse 19 said, for the good that I, in other words, he's saying this is the reason. For I know that in me, verse 18, that is in my, that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I Find not. Does it sound like a struggle with, 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 with Paul here? Does it sound like he's having a struggle? Does anybody think that? Are you listening? You're not answering if you're listening. <laughs> For the good, verse 19, that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, Evil is present with me. Now there's a whole lot more, a, a few more verses, but I want to pick up one more, which is verse 24. He said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Again, would you say that Paul is seeming to have a struggle? Amen. You may be seated. Let me preach to you for a little while about life's default setting. 
Now, to some of us, it means little because you probably do not deal with computers much, and I don't either, and the more I talk about it, the more you'll find that I don't know much about computers probably. But the definition of the word default, now let me go back. What, what's, my, what's, what's my topic? Life's default setting. Everybody say that, will you? Yes. So the term default has a few definitions, one being default means the loss due not to showing up. You've defaulted. Or the act of failing to meet a financial obligation. But the one that I want to uh, use this term in today is this. Default simply means an option that is selected automatically unless an alternative is specified. Let me read that again. An option that is selected automatically unless an alternative is specified. In other words, on my computers, there are default settings. That is, depending on how the settings are, different operations of the computer after being used will return back to the original or the setting that you've chosen. It defaults back to it. If you have more than one printer, you can set the computer to default to a certain printer so that automatically it will use that printer. There are, on, on, on my, on my uh, notebook computer, MacBook Pro, I have a Bible program and on this Bible program, there are 30 or more Bible versions. King James, of course, is the one we use mostly. Then you have the American Standard. You have the New International. You have on and on and on I could go. But when I, when I wanted to access the King James Version one time, it would go back to another version that somehow got set in there. I don't know. Seems like sometimes these things just play tricks on me. Last night I was trying to prepare for this message, and I mean that crazy computer went absolutely haywire. I mean, it yes, help it in Jesus' name. But it was it, it was awful. I'm thinking. Am I even going to be able to print these 45 pages that I'm going to preach from? <laughs> and you're sure glad I didn't read you a version out of each one of these 30 today, didn't you? But uh, you can use those default settings for a certain color, a certain font, a certain size font, a certain format on your word processor or you want to use the center of the page or a line to the left or justify or make both sides of the print line up or you can italicize all your print or you can use it portrait or landscape depending on which way you want to turn the page. It's, it's the way if you set that setting, it's when you turn your computer on, it's going to go back there. Amen. Amen. And on and on, it will go back to the settings that you have. It makes it easy so that you won't always have to choose. The original, and, and, and I will tell you, life has some default settings. When it comes to our destiny, there is a setting 
As for an individual, however, it can be changed. For mankind, however, the default was set. The setting was made. How was it made? The original setting was chosen by our creator. He put us in the garden. Paradise, if you will. Adam and Eve, that is. So they could dwell with God. If you'll listen to me, I'll teach you something here in a little bit. To dwell with God they were set. To dress and keep the Garden of Eden. To attend it. To guard and protect it. A place where God could communicate with his creation. Adam and Eve had it made. Their destiny was set by God to be in a perfect environment and to Enjoy life without toil and without pain and without trouble and, and without having to deal with the problems that we deal with today. Anybody had any problems this week? Amen. But the serpent came along. The devil came in to the picture and he put a question in, in Eve's mind when God said, the day that you eat of this tree, thou shalt surely die. And But the devil came along and said, hath God said? And she fell for it. I got news for you. If the devil can't convince you, he will confuse you. When it comes to serving God and living right and, 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 and obeying the standards of holiness and godliness. And if, 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 uh, if he can't convince you that all of these things are the right way and the wrong way and whatever, he will confuse your mind. And so he did with Eve. Are you hearing me? She fell for it and Adam went along. God Cursed the ground. Their dressing and keeping the creation became a job instead of enjoyment. The word tall was brought into it. You can look it up in the first, second, and third chapters of Genesis. They became, instead of just tilling it, they became talling with getting the ground to cooperate with them. And so the garden became a job instead of enjoyment. Let me tell you something. Living for God is not a job, it's a pleasure. Coming to church is not a have to only. It is a pleasure. It was, I was glad when they said unto me, are you helping me now? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. When, when church becomes a, a, a duty or just a responsibility or a have to, somebody has changed your default setting. Oh, can I preach a little while here? I, I hadn't preached here in a long time, so I got a lot of catching up to do. Oh, yes, I'm here to say that the... God drove out man and placed a flaming sword to keep the way of the tree of life. Why? Because of their sin. Their default setting was changed. They, death was brought upon them. That's right. Death changed this whole situation. Their default setting was changed from the environment of paradise to toil and labor and curse and destruction. For the day you eat, you shall surely die. There would have been no need for hell had there not been a sin. 
So hell was brought into the picture because of the fall of Adam and Eve. And since that time, everlasting destruction became the default setting for mankind. Why? Because of man's depravity. For every American, somebody wrote, for every American who believes he's going to hell, there are 120 who believe they're going to heaven. That is in stark contrast to Jesus' words when he said in Matthew 7, 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, verse 14, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. What are you saying? I'm saying there is a default setting. Our default setting has been changed from paradise and Garden of Eden and heaven, if you will, to a place called hell. Again, everlasting destruction became the default setting for mankind. Behold, Psalmist said in 51.5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. It's just automatic. We're born on our way to hell. The setting is on our way to hell. Now, don't, don't get too down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you down for a little while, but I hope we can get back up before we leave. So don't, don't think I'm just a negative preacher, but I am negative where the Bible is negative. He said, I was shaping in iniquity. I looked up term shapen, that word shapen up in the, in the Hebrew to, to shapen or shape something meant to twist it or whirl it in a circular or spiral manner. It meant to writhe in pain. What am I saying to you? I'm saying, behold, I was twisted and whirled in a circular position. I was brought to writhe in pain because sin twists and whirls you. It takes you on a downward spiral into a place called hell. That is our default position. That is, may I should say, mankind's default position because all have, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 5.12 of Romans, same writer, wherefore is by one man's sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. What are you saying? I'm saying life has a dreaded default position if you don't somehow change that default setting. Shall I, shall I substantiate that some more? Shall I, shall I put some more proof to what I'm saying is right? Isaiah 59, 2 said, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. 821 of Genesis said, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil, where I was shapen in iniquity, conceived in sin and shapen in iniquity. He said it again here, the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. In other words, when you're born, you're on your sinful motion. The, the, the Bible used the term the motion of sin. You're on the sinful motion, evil from his youth. 
Job said it like this in 11 and 12, for vain or empty, if you will, man would be wise, though he be born like a wild ass's coat, like a donkey the man is, the most stupid animal this writer is writing, an image for wild, untamed man. That is what men are born into and the attitude and the lifestyle that they possess Naturally, naturally, not spiritually, but naturally. 58.3 said the wicked are strange, Psalms. 58.3, the wicked are strange or to turn this, uh, the, the wicked are to turn aside from the, when they turned aside from the womb, they go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. Proverbs 22, 15, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. What am I saying? Does anybody know what I'm saying? I'm saying because of this Adamic nature, we have our default setting to be impure and ungodly and deceitful and unholy and wicked and all of these other things that because of the, uh, the, the default setting that has come our way. Paul said, as we read out earlier, when I want to do good, what? Evil is present with me. The sin nature that I am made of is just that way. As a tree leans, that's the way it's going to fall. But, but Paul somehow had to learn how to recover and change the setting. That's the reason he said, I die daily. I get up, if you will, or I wake up in the morning as a carnal man, I was born as a carnal child, but I wake up and I die out to sin one more time. I get up and I put my I put my default setting back a different direction. I'm not going to live in sin. It may be present with me, but I'm going to be an overcomer. Is anybody here saying, hey, I got troubles, but I'm going to be an overcomer. I'm going to change my default setting. Go ahead and praise them a little while. Go ahead and worship them a little while. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So then after the fall of man, heaven was not man's default setting. Nobody goes to heaven automatically. You don't just sit on your computer and type a few words. And then it automatically happens. You don't just get up in the morning and, 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 uh, and uh, start living right unless you've changed your default setting. Nobody goes to heaven automatically. Unless our sin problem is resolved, the only place we will go is our true default destination, a place called hell. This must be addressed. Come on, this got to be preached about. Judging by funerals you hear, nearly everybody seems to be going to heaven. But Jesus made it clear, small is the gate, narrow the road that leads to life, and few there be that find it. But broad is the way that leads to destruction. Going just any way will take you to hell, but you gotta get on the straight a narrow path. I make no apologies to you today for telling you that you got to repent. You got to get baptized in Jesus' name. You must receive the Holy Ghost. You must live godly if you're going to heaven. I said, I make no apologies for that. I make no apologies for the church and its standards. It's just that way. You just got to get your default setting right. Come on, somebody else praise him. Everybody in here ought to be happy today because you heard that truth. You heard that truth and you served him and you're living for him. We dare not wait and see when it comes to what's on the other side of life. We dare not wait and see when it comes 
to what's on the other side of life. Well, I'll just wait and find out what it's going to be like after I die. You better not wait. You can't afford to cross your fingers and hope your name's written in the, in the book of life. You better find out how you can get your name changed. You better find out how you can get his name applied. You better not wait till you draw your last breath or even near to drawing your last breath. Come on. Oh, yeah. Because your default destination is hell. Because we are sinners, that is, mankind are sinners. We're not entitled to enter God's holy place. Much could be said about hell. Let me tell you something. It's more than just the H word. It is real. It's seldom named in the world today unless they're telling somebody to go to it. Right? It's seldom named in the pulpit. But I come here one more time to tell you that your default setting, unless you've been filled with the Spirit of God, baptized in his name, come on now, living for God is going, you're going to a place called hell. Jesus spoke of hell more than anyone. He went there to conquer it for us, to conquer death, hell, and the grave. I know it's not a popular subject, and few dare to preach about it. But if you were giving some friends directions through the woods to a good hunting ground, and you know that one trail led there, and that was a fork in the road, and the second of the other road ended in a blinded, sharp cliff, would you only tell him of the good road? I don't think so. I think you'd say if you miss the right road, there's going to be a cliff. There's going to be a there's going to be a place that you can't see that you're going to fall off into it. Amen. Be terribly unloving of you not to warn him of such a situation, wouldn't it? And I suggest to you today it would be very very unloving of me, if you will, not to tell you about a place called hell. Come on. Did you know that when God created man, he said, he said, the day thou eatest of this tree, thou shalt surely die. He didn't just say, don't eat of it. He said, but if you eat of it, you're going to surely die. He didn't just say, don't. He told him the consequences. So I'm telling you, if you don't get right with God and if you don't change your default setting, you're going to a place of destruction forever and ever. I need somebody to help me today. I, I don't feel like I'm struggling, but I don't know if you're getting it yet. Come on now, somebody ought to say, I'm going to get right with God today. I'm going to serve God today. I'm going to change my default setting. I know I'm on my way to destruction, but if I can get down there to that altar and I can get the Holy Ghost, I can get baptized in water in Jesus' name, I can change my setting. I can change my destination. Oh, come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. It's far too easy to go to hell. It requires no change of course because you were born shaping in iniquity and conceived in sin. It's easy to go to hell, far too easy. Again, it requires no change of course it requires no navigational adjustments. We were born with our autopilot set toward hell. Apparently, many do not take the teaching of the church and the Bible as heaven or, or hell issues. I said, apparently, many people do not take the teachings of the church and the Bible as heaven or hell issues. I don't have a whole lot of time on issues that are not heaven and hell. Come on. I always try to figure out the consequences 
of a decision. If I'm making a decision, if I make the wrong one, what will happen? If I make the right one, what will happen? But I probably study the, uh, the, the negative side of it more than I do the positive side of it. Amen. But I'm telling you, uh, the word of God is forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth may pass away. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall not pass away, he said. The word of God must be adhered to. The word of God must be believed. This is not just a dictionary. It's not just a magazine. It's just not, it's not just another periodical. Come on, but it's the word of God. Have you ever found out what you got to do in the word of God? I'm not talking about some dogma or creed that some so-called prophet wrote, but I'm talking about words that are inspired by the word, of, by God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for direct, uh, 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 direction and correction and instruction in righteousness. I'm here to tell you the Bible is still the roadmap. The Bible is still the way to get your default setting changed. I said it's the way to get your default setting changed. Woo, come on, let's clap our hands to him just a little. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians 1, 8, 9 said, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting, with everlasting, Destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. I know, I, I know I'm repetitive, but repetition is the essence of learning, somebody said. I want to repeat one more time that if you obey not the gospel, there is everlasting destruction. Amen. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Hebrews 2, 3 said, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them which heard him? What are you saying? I'm saying, I'm saying you don't have to do anything to go to hell. All you have to do is neglect this great salvation. That's all you have to do is neglect it. All you have to do is neglect coming to church. All you have to do is neglect paying your tithes. All you have to do is neglect getting, not getting baptized in Jesus' name and getting the Holy Ghost and living God. You don't have to do anything. You can just, it's automatically set for you. The Bible is not again just another publication. It's the infallible word of God. Thank God for the word. Thank God we can ha we have it tonight. We're not living in a country where Bibles are outlawed, if you will. We don't have to sneak our Bible under our uh, under our clothing to take it with us. We can say, "Hallelujah! Here's the word of God." I don't have only have it in my hand. I have it in my heart. I have it in my hand, but I have it in my heart too. This is the place, and now is the time to change your default setting. Habits can lead you toward the good or the bad, but you can change the default settings in your life. You can, you can, you can change your habits to where you automatically get up in the morning and pray. You automatically come to church. You automatically pay your tithes and give your offerings. You automatically, when you come to church, and get your hands. You don't just have to be told. You just get your hands in the air and you worship God. It's just an automatic thing because you change your setting. Am I making any sense? Or is this too, is this too simplified? Is, 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 is it? Oh, yeah. Have you got tired of the setting you have? If you get tired of backsliding, 
One, term, one scripture said, I will heal their backsliding. I will, in other words, change their default setting from heaven to hell. Let me tell you something. You don't have to get in this backsliding mode. Let me tell you something, boys and girls. You ought to get your foot on the rock and say, as for me and mine, I'm going to serve God. Amen. Amen. A while back, I tried to change uh, one on my notebook computer and fail for the lack of knowledge. I could have called somebody that uh, I could have called my next door neighbor and he could have told me in a, in a short minute what to do. And, 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 and what was happening, I was, every time I wanted to go to a verse in the, on the computer in, in the Bible part of it, then it would default me back to the New International Version. I wanted to go to the King James Version, but it just kept taking me back because somehow that crazy thing changed the setting on me, it looked like. But I learned how, I guess, to go back and get that setting right. Amen, I'm here to tell you somebody ought to get, ought to, ought, ought to ask today. If you don't know how, you ought to ask. Me and then, brother, what shall we do? Woo, somebody can get you on the right path today. You don't have to go down the wrong road. You don't have to go down the wrong path. Hallelujah. I'm telling you one more time. Come up here to this altar. Get baptized in Jesus' name. Get the Holy Ghost and get your foot set on the right path. Second Peter 1, and besides this, I like Peter's terminology. He said, giving all diligence. Giving all diligence to add to your faith, virtue and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godless, brother kindness. Keep on adding, and brother kindness, add charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Forgot that he had gotten baptized and got the Holy Ghost. Come on now. When, when, when the devil comes to you, don't forget what you already have. Don't forget what your setting is. You don't have to yield to him because greater is he. Come on, help me finish that. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. You change your default setting when you got in that watery grave, baptized in his name, filled with his spirit. Come on now. You don't forget where you've come from and where you're going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said it again, wherefore the rather brethren give diligences to make your calling and election sure if you do these things, ye shall never fail. You know what I think? I think we ought to come back down here this morning and say, God, I'm gonna check my default setting one more time. I'm gonna see really where I am and where I'm headed. If you're leaning towards sin, then you're leaning towards hell. If you're leaning towards worship and praise and godliness and contentment and happiness and love and charity and all these things that I read to you that Peter wrote about, then your default setting is the right direction. But we ought to check it out today and say, here I am, Lord. Let me make sure. Let me steadfastly, as Jesus did, steadfastly set his faith, face to go to Jerusalem. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11, God speaking to Jeremiah, if you will, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected an expected end, for I know that I have plans for you. I have an expected end for you. <laughs> Woo, what is that? Bliss and happiness and peace and joy. God's got a good end for us. I said, God has a good end for us. 
Amen. I understand that you can change some settings on your computer. You can take it back to an earlier date and restore it and renew the whole system. Come on, somebody ought to punch reset today. Come on, somebody ought to punch reset and go back to that burial ground. Go back to that baptistry. Go back to that altar. I'm talking about in your mind. I'm not talking about literally. I'm not talking about getting baptized again, but I am talking about go back to that reset position and remember what you told God when you got the Holy Ghost. I will, Lord. I will, Lord. I will, Lord. I will, Lord. I was somewhere the other day. That's profound, isn't it? But my phone said home. It just come up. I don't know if the spirit got gets in these things or what. But I think this was a pretty good one, a good spirit. It said home. You're 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 you're. 52 miles from home or something. I don't know what it, but it said home. You say, well, you just punched something and it was the home telephone number. No, it said something about you're on your way home and you're not, you're not only, you're only so many miles or whatever. You know why it did that? Probably because somewhere in, uh, between here in Kalamazoo, Michigan or California or somewhere, I put in there home as a destination on my GPS in these things. I mean, that's a that thing right there is it's just a, a it's just an I five. It's not as good as some of you rich folks that got the I six yet. It's just an I five, but it can do. I mean, it's it it's more in this than 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 what some computers would have been 25 or 30 years ago. You know what I'm saying? It's absolutely amazing. It boggles my mind. But somewhere but between here and yonder, I decided I wanted to come back to the house. So I evidently put home in there. And Junior, it stuck in there. It was my default setting, home. Woo, hallelujah. I'm about to get happy here, folks. Oh, hell's not my home, but heaven's my home. Walls of jasper, gates of pearl, street of gold, river of life. Woo, hallelujah. Jesus is going to be on the throne. It's not going to be but one on the throne. Hallelujah. And I want to see him. Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. There to sing forever. Oh, I the saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past. Home at last. Home at last. Home at last. Ever. Woo, stand with me all over the place. Ever. To rejoice. Shoo, it's tongue talking weather in here, folks. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And you, Ephesians 2, hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses. Watch this. You hath he quickened who were dead. Everybody say, were dead. Past dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. You were on that default setting of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in times past. Our lifestyle was in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature. Everybody say, by nature. I was born in sin by nature. We're by the children of wrath, even as other. Oh, I like this. I like this, but it says, but God. Everybody say, but God. I was a sinner, but God. Come on, help me. I was lost. I was undone. I was on my way to hell. Woo! Who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By, by grace which ye are saved. 
and hath raised us up together <laughs> and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But God, but God, Brother KC, how long ago was it when you came back to church? How long ago was it? About 15 years ago, KC was a, away from God. Some 30 years before or so, 25 years or so before, he got baptized, got the Holy Ghost, if I can get this chronologically correct, and went away from God after four or five years or something. He got his default setting changed. First, he was on his way to hell when he got born. born. But then when he got baptized, he changed his default setting. Oh, hallelujah. Computer set programmed right up there. That's where you get it programmed right up there. Right up there. Whoa, I don't even have to preach this. Hey, he was dying. He had heart trouble. He knew if he didn't get right with God, I saw him when he come in right over there. Hallelujah. And God got a hold of his heart and he changed his default setting. Hallelujah. When he lifted his hand and said, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Somebody here needs today, if you're a backslider, you need to say, I'm sorry for my sin. I want to change this default setting. And, and uh, the computer's been in operation for years. That Holy Bible is your computer right there. Right. And you got a computer in him. Yeah. It, it'll tell you when you're doing something wrong yeah. or not. It, it'll tell you your computer right there. You got a built in computer. Let you know your built in computer. Praise God. Hallelujah. And all you got to do is change that default setting. If you're not right with God, you ought to run to this altar and push reset button. You ought to come down to this altar and say, God, I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's automatically set unless you have an alternative specified. And I believe somebody wants to specify their, their setting today. I said, I believe somebody wants to specify their settings today. Come on, sing for us. Oh yeah, come on. Oh yeah. to push reset today.